Okay, so today we're going to be making Birda 1 2020 number 108, uh, the dress with the simple cocoon shape. The main bodice is going to be in this confetti, uh, purple and white confetti on a black background. This is a viscose fabric, so it's quite drapey. The sleeves and the collar are going to be in the blue and white. I think that that will create a nice interesting contrast. My pattern pieces do not have a seam allowance, so I'm going to add the seam allowance as I cut around. We're going to need some interfacing for the collar piece, and that's about it. So, let's get cutting. Because my usual markers um, aren't going to work against this black background, I've used a pin to mark the dart point. So I've got the notches. And then I've got the pin for the dart point. So here's a view of the back of the dress that I'm making. So it doesn't have a zipper or anything. The opening is just a simple slit opening from halfway down the shoulder blade up to where the back of the collar is. And there are two buttons over there. And that's it. So it's a very simple, very easy, quick and fast make. But here's the view of the dress in the magazine itself and the actual patterns. As you can see, it's got a little bit of gathering over there. And then you have the collar. Okay, so. Now that I've finished cutting, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to put some interfacing um, on this. I'm using some lightweight uh, fusible interfacing um, for it. So here's a top tip for you. When you've got a lot of interfacing like I do, it's always a good idea to write somewhere on there with a sharpie, whether it's lightweight, medium weight, or heavyweight. So this one's a lightweight one. So I just have LW, and that makes things so much easier. I just wanted to take a moment to point something out, that the collar, according to the instructions, is supposed to be cut on a bias grain, which means that this is supposed to be at a 45 degree angle to the straight grain. I haven't done that. My pattern piece was cut on the cross grain and this is because the fabric that I'm working with is a lightweight viscose or rayon chalice as it's called in America. And in my experience when I've worked with a uh, viscose, especially viscose that is this lightweight, it doesn't do well with being cut on the bias. Now the other way around it would be to do what is called block fusing and if you aren't familiar with that concept go check out my tutorial video for better 12 2018 dress number 108. I go into some detail about block fusing and interfacing. So if I were to block fuse just to cut this collar on the bias that would be so incredibly wasteful. And it's not necessary because my print is quite busy. It's a confetti print. So you're not really going to be able to tell from a stylistic perspective whether it's been cut on the bias or not. So it doesn't matter that much to me. Plus, the collar is already used using a contrasting fabric. So I've already got the purple there and then I've got the blue. So I've already created the interest Sometimes you want to go on the bias with a collar because you just want to create some interest and interrupt the pattern. But I'm kind of already doing that by using a different color. So I don't see the point of actually wasting my interfacing and my fabric in order to block fuse it so that I can cut the pattern piece on the bias. So I just wanted to point that out that sometimes you don't necessarily always have to follow the instructions exactly as they are. There are other considerations that you can put into place. Try and think about why the design might have required it to be on the bias. This is a collar. It has to be interfaced. So it being on the bias is not about the drape that you get on the bias, but it is just about creating the contrast, the interruption of the pattern um, over there. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do the bust darts simply because these are precariously marked. Now, just a point to note, I sew, I do my sewing completely differently. I tend not to follow sewing instructions. I do what makes the most logical sense for me. So some of the things that I'll be doing will seem like they don't make sense until they do make sense. So if you're the sort of person that would get anxious about things not making sense, I would advise that you watch this video through to the end and then go back and sew along if you're planning on sewing along with it. Otherwise, um, 
let's get started so we're going to do the dot the dots first okay so after the dots have been done the next thing is we're going to do the gathering along the sleeve head and we're also going to do the gathering along the front over here next we're going to take our back pattern pieces and what we're going to do is we're going to stay stitch that back neckline this is especially necessary for me with my viscose um, drapey fabric this will distort because this is cut on a bias remember with our front neckline we've had to put in the gathering stitches and they also work as stay stitches that's going to keep it from getting distorted so go ahead and put some uh, stay stitching on that back neckline and then what you're going to do is you're going to go to your overlocker or use your pinking shears or whatever way you finish your seam edges so we're going to finish the seams before we sew up that center back okay now that's the center back seam overlocked that's the back neckline stay stitched so that isn't going to move anyway and what you're going to do is you're going to sew your center back seam from where the notch is and so remember there's a notch along here for where your opening begins so that you can pull this dress over your head so you're just going to sew that up together okay so that's the back ironed up and that's my opening over here we're not yet going to the ironing board um, so I tend to do all the sewing first as much sewing as I can before I then go to the pressing board to do all of the pressing that I can and it works okay so the next step is we're going to sew our shoulder seams together now so we're going to grab our front pattern piece and our back pat uh, pattern piece and we're going to do the shoulder seams Okay, so that's the dress with the shoulder seams sewn up um, together. We haven't yet gone to the overlocker to finish. What we're going to do before we go to the overlocker is we're going to sew the underarm seam of the sleeve, of the sleeves, and then we'll go to the overlocker and we'll do the shoulder seams and the underarm uh, seam of the sleeve. Okay, here we go. We're going to sew this up for both the sleeves then we'll move to the overlocker I've got a little helper helping me with winding the bobbing up so we're going to go and we're going to overlock this is the under sleeve hem and then we're also going to overlock the shoulder hem right now we're going to go and press the shoulder seam and you want to press it so that it goes towards the back that's just good standard protocol and then along your center back here you're going to press your center back seam open and then you're going to press the seam allowances down along that slit along that opening and then you're going to stitch it down I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. Right, here we go. That's the center back seam pressed open. This is the seam allowance pressed open. And you're going to go right ahead and you're going to top stitch the seam allowances down right to where the slit opens and go across and then top stitch there the seam allowance down. And that's your back opening done. Right, I've gone ahead and I've made this little um, band which is going to be for the button loops. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get started on the collar. So I'm planning on using um, these shank buttons. They're vintage. I've had them for quite a while now. Um, almost six years, I think. I picked this up at a car boot sale in Essex and they're really lovely but I think they go quite nicely with the blue confetti so uh, I can't find my little strap <laughs> I have that strap and I just have to make sure that it's big enough for this to go through okay so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this into two 
equal length and we're going to make some little loops on along this is the center back seam here okay so the idea is that you're gonna fold this down and sew along here to create uh, your center back and what you'll need to do is have your loops sandwiched between these two bits here but facing this way so when I started sewing the first time I did loops I put them out the wrong way and then when I turned the collar under the loops were actually um, on this side inside that so you want to make sure that your loops are going like so here we are And then you want to uh, baste them down. Um, I tend to prefer hand sewing because um, hand basting them down and that just ensures that they don't move around. So there you go. So you want to make sure that they're actually pointing. It looks counterintuitive, especially if it's your first time doing this sort of loops, but you just have to have them facing out. And then when they're sewn and you turn it um, right side out, they'll be facing the correct way. So don't worry if it looks a little bit awkward. Okay, I just wanted to show you what this would look like. So I've done my uh, basting down. And so, right, I'm gonna use my right hand. You're gonna fold it over like so, right? And the bit that's going to be on the inside you're going to fold under your seam allowance and then you sew it down just like that. So whatever your seam allowance was, just turn it under along the center back. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, there we go. So now I'm just going to stitch along here and I've also done the other side as well and we're just going to stitch along here okay so this is what it will look like um, you'll trim off obviously and do your grading along there and then when you turn it around you go you got your cute little button loops Those look good. It's a good idea at this point to just check and make sure that they're big enough to fit the buttons that you've selected. So, so you have to suffer seeing me try on. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to carry on to the next step now. Okay, now at this point, you've got these and these done so now you're going to fold it in half and then we're going to go over to the ironing board and we're going to do some pressing loads of pressing now so my kids have got these things called hamler beads and they'll make them and then they'll just come and deposit them onto my ironing board um yeah so i have to iron these first before i go on and do my own stuff Okay, so that's been pressed. Uh, now I'm going to grab my sleeves and I'm going to press the sleeve, the under sleeve seam. For pressing um, under sleeve seams, I like to use my, uh, what do you call this? I call this my slim tailor's ham. Yeah, it's kind of like a tailor's ham, but it's for sleeve. Sleeve roll. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take your collar now and we're going to sew it to the neckline. Um, so you just, this is the center back opening, attach that to that and then pin it all the way along until you get to where you're supposed to do the gathering and then you do the gathering, match it to the notches, to the points on your collar and then all the way around and I'll show you what that looks like.
Okay, so here we go. This is what this sort of looks like pinned together and there's the gathering there along the center front all the way there and we're going to sew this and here's a little tip for you when you're actually sewing uh, two pattern pieces and one of them is interfaced and the other one isn't interfaced always make sure that it's the uninterfaced one that's on the feed dogs that's to say you sh your view should be that you're seeing the interfaced pattern piece and that's because your feed dog they tend to make fabric run through faster than your interfaced uh, than the upper layer so if you've ever noticed sometimes when you're sewing by the time you get to the end of a seam even though you cut them perfectly equal you'll have one piece a little bit longer than the other that's because of the feed dog easing so this an interfaced one has got a bit more give already so it can sort of like uh, accommodate that better than the interfaced uh, bit so my sewing got a lot better when I started making sure that it was always the uninterfaced fabric against the feed dogs okay so that's been sewn on now and for once we're actually going to go and iron a seam straight away after we've sewn it so you're just going to iron this into the collar itself and then we're going to grade it uh, do any trimming that you need to do and then this is just going to go over just like that we're nearly done nearly done separately i am loving the contrasting colors <laughs> Here we go. So this has been graded, turned and uh, trimmed, and pinned. And now I'm going to do some hand sewing to finish off this collar. So I just wanted to take five to talk a little bit about hand sewing. Um, because one of the things that really gives me a buzz about my own clothes is knowing that I actually did a little bit of uh, sewing using, you know, these actual hands and I found that lately I am wanting to do more hand sewing and certainly wanting to improve my hand sewing technique and so I was thinking about why I've been more inclined to do hand sewing and that's because one of the biggest things that made a difference was using beeswax so when you use beeswax your thread um, goes bone straight so it doesn't get tangled up or anything like that so it makes hand sewing so much more fun and so much more joyful and also the other thing is that i'm located underneath the skylight so i've got the light to be able to see properly and i didn't realize that before i was trying to do um so i'm just running my thread through the beeswax I was trying to do my sewing in a dark place um, and so we have that and then I'll just run it on an iron and then it will be bone straight and I'll start sewing by hand to finish off um, the collar here and I'm also for the first time actually going to sew my label on by hand I, I, I don't know. I think it might be doing all of the vintage bird where I'm seeing vintage sewing things and just kind of really appreciating where this craft has come from before we got all of the sewing machines um, around. But yeah, that's one of the things that I need to do. I want to improve my hand sewing techniques. Uh, so anyway, just my top tip, if you don't like hand sewing and you haven't yet tried using beeswax, I would seriously advise that you give it a second chance, get yourself some beeswax. It's not even expensive at all and it lasts you ages. This is the second one that I got um, ever since I started sewing. I've been using this one, which I bought for £1.85. So I'll put the link in the description box uh, down below. But if you haven't tried beeswax during your hand sewing, do try it. I think you'll find that it does make a difference. Just remember that once you run your thread through the beeswax, you have to actually press it. 
the first couple of times I tried to use beeswax, I didn't actually press it. So I was just trying to sew it like that. And of course, it gets more tangled. So just remember, you need heat to activate the power of beeswax on thread. Um, also, another point that I would make is get yourself some decent needles, not the ones that you find in a supermarket or a grocery store that say sewing kits. Those are really poor, poor quality needles. Um, just invest the four quid to get yourself some really decent hand sewing needles that have um, an eye for um, a decent sized eye that can take good quality thread. And the last thing is... A little snipping this makes such a difference you try snipping threads using your <laughs> it just doesn't work so get yourself um, a little uh, hand snippet thingy and also somewhere to store your 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 needles is really nice as well it's a good thing don't just have them lying around and getting blunt all over the place yeah, so that's Hilla's top tips to do with uh, hand sewing, which you're probably going to see more of because I'm going to be learning how to do to improve my hand sewing techniques. <laughs> so I also wanted, forgot to say that um, when you can do hand sewing, it is such a powerful tool. There are so many instances where I totally messed up something you know, and, you know, this is messed up like proper beyond actual recognition. But you know what has come to the rescue? Hand sewing. Hand sewing can cover a multitude of sewing scenes. You know, you can actually do a lot more stuff and you get a lot more flexibility than you get with a sewing machine, especially when it comes to fixing um, minor mistakes. So that's worth thinking about as well. Improving your hand sewing skills gives you an extra weapon in your arsenal when you're trying to tame the fabric and the threads to create the vision that you want okay so i've just done my hand stitching not the neatest but it's definitely getting better so you can see the little um stitches there and i tried not to show through on this side but there were times that i did but that's okay right so the next thing is i'm going to be putting my label on and I'm going to do some more hand stitching it's very meditative actually okay so this is that one done I tried to do um, a pick stitch I think that's what it's called at least but I like that I think I like the look of this better than the one where I use the sewing machine to sew it on um, okay so anyway after that meandering through hand sewing you can go ahead and do your buttons on now if you want to or you can wait until um, the end but right now we're going to go do those side seams we're going to do the side seams and overlock them can't wait to wear this such a beautiful drape <laughs> i've got a dress now i'm quite happy with that Let's see if i can see that collar it's got a really nice collar do you know what this could also work sleeveless how adorable is this separately i feel like this also works with the stripy uh top that i'm wearing underneath look at that oh, can't wait to finish okay so i've sewn up the side seams need to go finish them on the overlocker and then we're going to set in the sleeve finish the arms hole um, seam and then we'll do the hemming put your buttons on we got a dress <laughs> it's one sleeve set in and i just have the second sleeve to do so the key thing to note about sleeves um, when you're sewing especially with sewing pattern with sewing magazines you always need to mark the notch so with burda the notch is always on the front so that's how you know to match up i've got my uh my gathering line uh, for the easing in so i only use one line uh, when i'm easing in sleeves because that's what they do in industry they don't have time to be doing two lines to do any easing um, of the sleeves in fact sometimes they don't even do that they just use a technique called crimping 
this is what it looks like when it's all sewn up now how gorgeous it does you've got the opening I'm loving this vintage uh, sewing buttons but yeah let's see what it looks like on a dress form and there we have it how lovely is that Birda 1 2020 number 108 this is my first um, make from Birda 2020 and I love how this looks Uh, ignore the mess in my sewing room this is how I roll 